What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel and in today's video we're going to be talking about something directly related to my past couple of videos talking about our minor league systems within MLB The Show 23 and how you guys can get the best results out of your development in your minor league systems. Specifically today I want to talk about how to get the best performance out of your minor league teams and just really one tip that I have for you that you can utilize to gain better performance out of your minor league team. And that is, again, by allocating your players in certain locations. So just jumping right into what I want to talk about today, I want to just kind of discuss the overalls of players and how they factor in to whether a player is going to do well in your minor league system through simulation. In addition, I want to talk about some individual ratings that will help your player performance in your minor league system. These factors will combine together for a minimal effort way to improve performance in your minor league system. So we talked about recently in our latest video, putting certain players down into AAA, AA, and single A, and why to do that based on their overall, based on their potential, based on their age, based on where they stand in terms of all the other players at positions within your minor league system. And specifically, we talked about one player in the last video in Lolo Sanchez, who is a 66 overall A potential outfielder that might be sacrificing some actual playing time based on the players that are in front of him, having to compete with players like Cal Mitchell, Travis Swaggerty, Lonnie White Jr., and Kanan Smith Najigba, who are all a higher overall. And therefore, the system on its own is going to place those players in the lineup generally more often than you will see Lolo Sanchez in the lineup. But how do we use that to our advantage to improve our performance in the minor leagues and try to come away with more wins? Well, this is going to factor in based off the players overall, but it's also going to factor in the players individual ratings. So Lolo Sanchez, for example, has really good defensive stats. He's got pretty good athleticism and he actually has a pretty decent bat with contact on both sides sides in the 50s and vision in the 50s. That's not necessarily stellar for AAA, but being that he's in AAA, I can assume that he's going to perform better down in AA. And if you do that as a whole with your minor league system, you can game the system to give you better performance. So if I wanted to get better performance out of my lineup down in AA, and I wanted to get more wins, which is going to result in better progression for my players, I may want to consider sticking a few higher overall players down there on that minor league team. As we talked about, we want to see most of our players in AAA be from that 65 to 75 overall range, and most of your players in AA are going to be from that 55 to 65 range. However, that's not always going to get the job done, especially when you don't have a stellar minor league system. We have a lot of pretty low overalls in our double A roster, and in our triple A roster, we have quite a few pretty low overalls. I could generate better performance out of these players by picking out specific ratings like higher contact, higher power, higher vision that are going to help them perform better at the plate. Or I can pick out specific players that are just generally higher overalls and better players and plug them into my minor league system. This is why you'll oftentimes see players in other minor league systems that are veteran players. You'll oftentimes see a 30 plus year old player that might not be a super high overall and might not be the most impactful player at the MLB level still playing in the minor league system. Because in real life and in the game, it can help you to supplement your minor league system with really helpful, really productive role players to help bring up the performance of that team. So when we talk about Lolo Sanchez as our prime example in today's video, we made a comparison in the last video where we compared him against his secondary positions. So we know he can play right field, left field, and center field. So let's compare him again against the right fielders, left fielders, and center fielders of the double A roster. We have a couple of 64 overalls, so that's not too big of a difference. But when we go to double A in center field, we have a 59, a 58, and a 52. And when we look at their specific ratings, not very good contact here, not very good contact on this guy, and certainly not very good contact on Eldon Hill, though he's decent on one side. When we go to our left fielders, we have a 55 overall, who again, doesn't have very good contact, doesn't have great vision, doesn't have great power, or anything like that. So when you even just 
just look at their overalls and then also look at their individual ratings, we then get the picture that Lolo Sanchez is probably going to do better than all of those players in the double A system. That's not necessarily a guarantee. Keep that in mind. Just because I put him down there doesn't mean he's going to succeed. And just because I put him down there does not mean we're going to get more wins. However, there is an argument to be made that plugging certain players into a lower lineup is going to help them generate more wins. So if you have a player like a Lolo Sanchez, and in fact, if you have a couple of players that kind of fit this mold where they might not be getting the most out of what they can in AAA, and they might be behind a few other players, it could be very beneficial to you to stick them down in a level further down than that. And the same thing goes for your MLB roster. Does it really benefit me to have a 69 overall, 67, a 71, all of these low overall players on my MLB roster? It's something to consider because these players can probably be filled in via another free agent, via another trade, and we can make that work. But these players might therefore also help our minor league system to develop and get wins and play really well. So yes, there is benefit to having even older players like Jose Iglesias, for example, in the minor league system. In fact, it'll help your MLB team to have certain role players like that within the system. As an example, in my Pirates franchise, we signed Jose Iglesias as a free agent because of his contact, because of his vision. He's no stellar athlete. He's not going to be the best player on my team, but as a 69 overall, this guy brings a lot to the table. And I guarantee you having him on your roster in MLB, AAA, AA, whatever it is, is going to help to generate more runs, more hits, and more production out of that team. And again, turn that into more wins if you're doing that on a consistent basis, doing that with multiple players, and therefore more progression in the end. So really the purpose of this video is to kind of illustrate that it's not always going to be perfect. And that's kind of been the, the, the method of the last few videos is to illustrate that it's not going to be a perfect system from overall to overall. Like I can tell you all day long that having 65s to 75s in your AAA system is what you should generally go with. And in your AA system, 55s to 65s is generally what you should go with. But there are so many other factors that are at play here. And this is one of the major ones that I definitely want you to consider because again, you can get more out of a player like a Brennan Malone by sending him down to double A. And that might be helping my team get more wins than they would have if this guy was a 60 overall player or a 55 overall player. And likewise, when we look at specific stats, you might be able to find a player down here that has really good contact and really good power and is therefore helping their team more than somebody else that's at the that minor league level. And again, when you start to combine each of these individual topics with all of the other factors that are at play here, you can really start to develop a really hefty minor league system that is going to be winning games and producing a lot of progression points for your players. So when we take a look at our minor league system here with Lolo Sanchez, there's even more reason to move him down to double A. Number one, he's not really doing that well in triple A. So maybe we get him some momentum by sending him down against easier pitchers. Likewise, the players that are behind him down here in double A really aren't playing all that well. We're talking about a 217 and a 184 batting average. Maybe it's time for Lolo Sanchez to go down there and provide a spark to that team. Yeah, he's cold right now, but that doesn't mean that he's not going to get hot when he goes down to double A. And maybe we put him down into double A and we leave him there for a while so that he can help that team get successful. He can help that team make a playoff push and play extra games, which again is going to result in more development for the team overall. Because as we said in the last video, playing time is the key to development within MLB The Show franchise mode. If these players aren't Aren't playing they're not going to develop that much and if you play them more meaning getting them to playoff games and getting them to playoff series which are there in double a and triple a then you're going to be getting more development out of those players potentially or more development out of your team as a whole so you, there's reason to want your team to succeed and there's reason to want to have higher overall players in each of your farm system levels that doesn't mean that you have to have a ton at each level and in fact i haven't done a fantastic job of doing so within this franchise but i have certain players down in the minor leagues even though they're playing well and i could bring them up to the majors because i know they're going to help with their success down there and help to bring the level of that team up. 
A great example would be Kane and Smith Najigba. I could have certainly brought him up to the MLB level for various reasons, but I decided to sign that 69 overall, essentially DH, to, to take his spot because that player is going to play a role and this player is going to play a role as well. He'll get to my major league team eventually, but he's going to help these other guys succeed. He's doing really well in the minors and that contact and vision that he has is pretty solid for a triple A team. Same thing with my double A roster. Again, I'm not doing a perfect job of it right now and I could add a couple of more or, you know, high level quote unquote players to the double A roster, which would be high 60s, maybe even a 70 overall, that would really spark their performance and change the way that the outlook is for my minor league system and really try to uh, develop this team up. But again, you can kind of pick and choose what makes sense. Oftentimes having a good contact hitter or a good power hitter is enough to provide that spark. Maybe you find one or two players or sending down a pitcher that could potentially provide a spark to that team. So when we actually take a look at our double-A roster, you can kind of see where you actually need players to plug in. So looking at their ERAs right now, most of these guys actually have really solid ERAs. So I wouldn't need to add a higher overall pitcher. And in fact, they're pretty much all hot, as you can see by the symbols on the left side of the screen. So I wouldn't need to put a, a pitcher down there in the double-A system to get this team to have a spark. I might need to add a batter that's just going to be able to hit a couple of home runs and get more hits and get more RBIs that will allow this team to put higher points points up on the board. But anyway, that's really just what I wanted to talk about today and make sure that it was out there in relation to the other videos that I recently put up because it's another important factor that you definitely need to consider when you're deciding who to put in AAA, who to put in AA, who to call up, when to call them up, those different factors. Because oftentimes people are pretty quick to try to call players up, especially if they have high potential, but that can be detrimental to your minor league system as a whole. If I took Brennan Malone or one of these pitchers down here, Mitch Australia, and put them up into AAA because they are having success, that means somebody else lower overall has to come in and play for them. And ultimately, that might mean that there's more losses coming the way of this minor league team and ultimately preventing them from getting into a playoff spot. Nonetheless, it's just a factor to consider. I'm not saying it's the most important factor by any means, but it is important to consider. I hope that you found this video informative, and if you did, leave a like down below, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you have a good one.